guys, thanks for joining us um, on this episode of Tipsy Tales. Today, we're just going to jump right into our story. We do have a special guest um, on the story that we are telling, uh, and it's going to be a joint story, and we're going to talk about Kelsey Schelling, and I'm going to let our guest introduce herself. (laughs) My name is Mayanna DeFusco, and I am a police officer with the City of Pueblo, Colorado Police Department. I've been there almost 22 years. Oh, Dang, wow. has it been that long? I know. That's insane. I was a crime scene investigator for 10 years, and the rest of my time has been spent on patrol. Um, I was in the crime scene unit when Kelsey Schelling was reported missing, actually. I was not. I had just left the crime scene unit. <laughs> I was on patrol. (laughs) I'm trying to get my my gears straight. Um, Yeah, I had just gotten back to patrol. And um, I wasn't working the day she was reported missing, but I had several um, occasions to have things to do with the case thereafter. Okay. And, And what is your position in the department? What's your official position? Um, My title is a corporal. That just means I've been there a long time. (laughs) Um, I don't want to say just a patrol officer, but I'm the cop in uniform in the police car that answers calls for service. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So I guess we can just jump right into the story. Hi, Alma. Hi. Hi, Carlene. (laughs) How are you doing? Just great. This is my cousin, Mayanna. That's right. (laughs) This is the whole reason we are talking to Mayanna. Right. Right. Okay. okay, intro's done. And and might I add that uh, Carlene's been talking about this case for a while, like, and I'll let you talk about. Like, when it would happen, my Anna contacted me. She gave me a picture of Kelsey. That's all, just a picture. Right. I was like, what do you see? And I said, <laughs> a lot. She's, she, <laughs> she's not alive. <laughs> and then we went on from there. Right. I told her a bunch. But we can go through that after you read okay, it, I suppose. So we're going to talk about Kelsey. Um, And the day she went missing, um, the last time her family and friends heard from her, Kelsey Schelling, she was 21 years old. She lived in Denver, Colorado. And the last time they heard from her was February 4th, 2013. And she was eight months pregnant. No, she was eight eight, eight weeks. weeks. Sorry. (laughs) She was eight weeks pregnant. Sorry. (laughs) That would have been even worse. Even worse. It was it was bad enough as it was. Literally just last month, was it March? Actually, it's been two months ago. Her boyfriend and father of her unborn child, Dante Lucas, uh, was found guilty of first degree murder in her death. He'll face life in prison without the possibility of parole. So, and this is a rare conviction since Kelsey's body has never been found. So, so back- hold on, pause. Mayanna, are they going to go after the other, at least one person that we uh, suspect? I don't think so. Fuck. Without any, I know. I, tr- I truly believe evidence. that's the whole instigator of everything. Conspiracy or anything. Mama? Yes. Mm-hmm. Her name um, is Sarah Lucas. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh it did it to her too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is a fan on uh. Okay, so February 4th, 2013, Kelsey had recently found out she was pregnant, and that day was her first official doctor visit where she got confirmation on an ultrasound. Based on interviews with her mother, Laura Saxton, and close friends, she was both scared and excited to become a mother. Her on-again, off-again boyfriend was a different story, and I don't even want to call him a boyfriend. Like, in her mind, they they were, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayanna, but they were together but i think at that time they had broken up or something am i wrong in her mind oh he's one of those guys that i mean he was never exclusive with her yeah i believe she was exclusive with him right but it wasn't reciprocated on his end so he plays it like we weren't together but when i believe that when they were together he was like you know, no, you're my baby. You're my everything. You know, that kind of guy. Yeah, that's what he led her to believe. Yeah. Um, and she unfortunately Fell believed it. it. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like she was really into him and she really cared about him. Because he talked her into coming from Denver. And it was nighttime, right? When he 
he had her drive from Denver. She had to work and he wanted her to call off work and she refused to because she had integrity and didn't Mm -hmm. want to do that to her job. Right. So she didn't get off work till I think nine o'clock at night. And, um, he begged her to come to Pueblo so he could talk to her about the pregnancy, kind of pretending like he was happy about it. But I'm pretty sure the news had gotten to his mother at that point. And, um, can you pause for a second? Do you have a TV on? It's his TV. Okay, because there was a girl outside that was acting weird. I was just making sure. A girl? Yeah, some lady out there. I just <laughs> want to make sure it's not her screaming. Is it a real person? <laughs> no, there's a real person out there. <laughs> She's not an apparition. All right, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. So um, anyway, she drove February 4th. She drove from Denver to Pueblo. That's the last time her family heard from her. Right. And he basically manipulated her, it sounds like. To get out. To, to make yeah. the drive. So it sounds like on the um, text messages that he went from being a dick about it, excuse my language, and then he all of a sudden he got super sweet and was like, I want right. to see you. And then I also read that she had sent a uh, picture of the ultrasound to the mother, his mom. I, that yes. could be true or not. That's how she got wind of it? Yes. And um, again, I believe that enraged her because when you think of a dysfunctional family, this family, I mean, exceeds that tremendously. There's an older sister and then Dante Lucas. And then there's twin siblings, a boy and a girl. And I remember when I first found out they were twins, um, all Sarah could do was tell me about how those twins were a product of a rape what Mm -hmm. that she was raped and that's the only reason those twins were in existence so very narcissistic very selfish i mean i don't know why you would need to share that with a complete stranger um well that kind of definitely fits into what i was being told then because Dante was probably like her ticket out, like when oh, she yeah. thought he was going to be the big basketball star, then to see this girl ruined everything. Exactly. And so many people that I, I knew, uh, let's see, one of my daughter's school teachers, her husband was a coach and talked about how the mom would get kicked out of games, out of oh, basketball games dang. because of her behavior, her wow. drunken behavior. Somebody's touching yeah. my hair. And our mics keep jacking up. I know. It's okay. I'll fix the sound. <laughs> She's here. Because I keep getting goosebumps, too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yes, look. Can't make that up. Yeah, you can't. And it hurts on it's, my uh, worst arm. Her ha- hair is standing straight up on her arms. It's like, whoop. I too. wish we could on see if side. my hair is moving. Because this is what it feels like. I don't have a bug in my hair, do I? Yep, right there. A spider. I'm just playing. Don't. <laughs> Don't. The other day I was putting on makeup and I felt a tickle and I just thought it was hair. So I was ignoring it. And then I looked in the mirror and it was a spider crawling on my neck. Oh my gosh. So I, and I'm like, oh. so then, I did, then I had to vacuum everything because I didn't know where it went. So it sounds like the mom passed her narcissism down to him because he sounds oh, very you. narcissistic. <laughs> Good judge of things. Yes, I do believe that um, yeah. is definitely what happened. Okay, so that night she goes missing, and uh, the next day... There were several attempts to cover up, even that she was missing before anyone knew she was missing. Right. So her ATM card was used. Um, her cell phone texted... Well, let's see. Somebody text messages from her cell phone that did not sound like her. And that were well after the time she had last been truly heard from. Um, Her car showed up at a different location than it was. When questioned, Dante reported that they had went to Parkview Hospital because she was having miscarriage type issues. Never happened. And they didn't even have any record of that, which is crazy. That he would even think that. Well, that's how that's how when you're. When you're stupid as a stupid does, like he's, he's that yeah, stupid that he didn't think about it. And then the car moving around at Walmart mm-hmm. and the hospital. I, I told you my, what they say about that mm-hmm. is that 
when I was texting her, like that day that she's like, what do you see? And I was like, and and then I would say, wait, <laughs> is there more than one person? And then I was like, oh my gosh, is she pregnant? And my aunt is like, yes. <laughs> and then I said, um, oh, I feel like they took her within a mile radius of where her car was found. And then when I got to the car, I was like, I think that is like his bro- one. I didn't know he had more than one brother, but I was like, that's his brother that moved the car. So what do you think? Oh, I think there was many more people than just Dante involved yeah. in this, but he, he knows he went down. So he'll right. never, you know, I think it's his brother. Live. I think. The mom roped in the siblings. Yeah. I mean, I definitely know she raised them to all have each other's back Mm -hmm. and protect one another and certainly never snitch on one another. No, because I think she would snitches end up in ditches. She would would definitely be the one to take out her own kid. Mm -hmm. If I feel her right. She's the kind that would have no problem to cover her own ass. Am I wrong? So it sounds like even the night that she got there, he had her waiting for over an hour at one location. I guess I think it was a Walmart. um, It was the Walmart. And then there was a little. um, So the the place where he lived, the house that he lived in um, at that time was his grandmother's house. And it was not far from the Walmart at all. Two minute drive, maybe. Okay. And waited there for an hour and a half, obviously annoyed that she had just driven that long. That late at night. Yeah, that late at night, stuck in a parking lot, and he's just not coming to see her. I mean, obviously got her pissed off. And so um, he had her go wait at a location closer to the house, kind of just like a dead end street. And um, again, she waited there. Like, what could he possibly have been doing? Right. You know what I mean? Uh, After he convinces her to come down. So do you think this was premeditated or do you think it leads to being premeditated? I think he was probably fighting with his family like um, over, you know, about it. What should we do? You know, maybe some people saying don't go see her at all. Um, Other people saying, yeah, go see her and take care of it. I feel it. I hear like, this is your future. You can't let her run your future. Mm -hmm. But again, this is the mom's future we're talking about. Right. And even though he's not the big basketball star anymore, because it, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayanna, but he had already kind of been going down the wrong path. Yeah, he had. Because what I, I mean, was so sensing. Many, he was just, he's just one of those people that's talented just by nature. Yeah. And um, yeah, he, so many people had tried to intervene and save him and make him, you know, into the big star that he could have been. And he just... Because I hadn't seen, remember, all I got was a picture of Kelsey, nothing else. Mm -hmm. But I I kept seeing almost like the way she's making me see him isn't what he looked like, but how she wanted me to see him was like he was a complete meth head or crackhead. Like he was so on drugs. And then at one point she showed me that they, he, they were living in like a tra. Do you remember this? Like a trailer park area. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, like, with other, like, where drug druggies hang out. Oh. And so, I remember texting my Anna going, is he, like, on drugs? Is he a druggie? What's going on? Because that's, she was totally making me see him a way that he doesn't actually look. Because he doesn't actually look like that, does he? Or does he look no. bad? No. No, I didn't he think doesn't. So. But that's how, she, that's how she reached me to get yeah. to that conclusion. And he, uh, I think they were more into pills than anything, Mm -hmm. which is, I mean, obviously still a drug problem. Like oxys and stuff, Xanax, Mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So when he's questioned by the police, he says he told the officer um, that on February 5th, when she came over around 2 or 3 a.m. to discuss her relationship, he tells the officer that he didn't want to be in the relationship in, with her anymore. This is what he's telling her. And he says she came back that morning and they both went to Parkview Hospital. Where he says he stayed in the car. She goes in for about an hour and a half and comes out no longer pregnant. <laughs> and of course, there's no hospital <laughs> records. Doesn't even make sense. His, that that part doesn't even make it sense. It doesn't happen that way. Yeah. He's, I mean, so ignorant. Yeah. Just, 
That's hilarious. Like, have you not been in the real world? Like, I know. that's hilarious that you think that even an investigator would believe that. Well, and right. then he tries to distance himself and says, well, we're not together anymore. Like, who does that when you're being questioned? <laughs> and and that's not even the point. The point is, you were the last one with her and everybody knows it. Yeah. Whether you're together or not, now you're saying you took her to a doctor appointment that you say you stayed sitting in a car patiently waiting for almost two hours, hour and a half, two hours, that you just sat there patiently waiting while she's in there by herself. Yeah. Finding out that she's no longer pregnant and you're like, "Mm, well, yeah. And how convenient. And then I guess there was a text message at some point to his mom prior to this where he tells his mom that she's not pregnant anymore. Yes, and but that was after she went missing. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. he's like, it's taken care of and she's not pregnant yeah. anymore or something like that. I don't know. Interesting. So All my right. whole thing is that, and Harleen knows this, I guess we'll just jump ahead. Um, there were many, many places that were searched, um, fields, dumps, um, cemeteries, mountains, hills, prairies, everything you can think of. And... I mean, not, not one shred of evidence that she's anywhere. Right. And anytime when he would finally get close to breaking, cause there were a couple times we have a couple of amazing detectives who almost got him to break. The one thing he was 100% firm in is his statement that you will never find her body. And wow. to me, for somebody to be that certain. Yeah. You obviously um, know you know, you know that she's not going to be found. Right. So, I mean, if you buried her, she might be found. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, A dog might dig her up. You just have to tell somebody where she's at and she'll be found. Um, I came to the realization not too long ago that he was an acquaintance to a person who works at a local funeral home and crematorium Mm -hmm. here. And it would have been very easy for him to call that person up that night. Wow. That would also explain. That just gave me goosebumps right now. Yeah. And it would also explain, because remember from day one, I'm like, she keeps telling me she's in pieces. Like they can't, you're not going to, because even they were like, by, she, like, she's showing me trees like I wouldn't recognize. She's showing me water. She's showing me um, the backyard. Like they started yeah. to put her there. So like if they were digging up the backyard, I'm like, they they might find a fragment that will be like, yes, they were putting her here, but they're not going to find her there. And then, um, so that can also mean, even if they did that, she could still be by water because they could have dumped her ashes there or something. But that makes sense why she would tell me she's in pieces because that I would understand. Right. If she showed me anything else, I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't be like, oh, she's cremated. Oh, she could have just told me she's cremated. Right. I would have gotten that. But but your her theory makes sense. And 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 when I had people over and did not tell them that I invited Kelsey to our circle, and then they were like, I keep seeing like somebody's in black plastic bags. Mm. They could have cremated her and put her in the black bag absolutely i mean it doesn't yield very much and she was no. a tiny girl anyway, but if they don't have anything else yeah. you know what i mean they that would be just something very easy to grab anything any evidence that they would have had that like they were trying to get rid of yeah gone i mean gone yeah that would have all been in the yeah gone. i, I mean me, it all like, makes sense your theory makes a lot of sense just deep down for him to be so confident mm-hmm. that you ever find her body right mm-hmm. that's just what i keep going back to yeah i think so so you guys did search the, her, the backyard yard at his grandmother's oh, yeah. they house dug up the backyard yeah they dug up um they did a couple like grid searches at our dump they did have an expert i don't know if you remember seeing this that testified at the trial this guy isn't there's only he's only one of like three people in the united states that are forensic e- experts in um sanitation i mean dumping grounds right and he said that in the area that they were dumping trash back in february of 2013 there would be 10 stories of trash over jeepers that right oh wow so there i mean there would be no way to get to her, her if right. 
in fact, she was in the dump somewhere. I definitely don't think she's in the dump. So there was no. Public Works, uh, the landfill people that came and testified and said that there was like a car that pulled up that night. And... Yeah, and damage to the lock. And I think that may have been a first ditch. Oh, shit. What do you know? We have to do something. Right. Um, because they live very close. The grandma's house was very close to the landfill. Wow. As the crow flies, 500 yards, maybe. Wow. Yeah. So very, very close. So I think that may have been a first attempt at getting rid of her. And then... It sounds like... Because grandma also is on police record, I think. I don't think she testified, but saying that at like four o'clock that morning, she remembers hearing them come in the garage and going out there and saying, what are you doing? Right. Ooh, I need to walk. Is that... Can we watch that? The Uh, trial? I didn't watch the trial. I was reading a bunch of like different anecdotes. Did they have TV? I don't think it was. I don't think they did. No, I don't think they did because of COVID. But um, our Pueblo chieftain would probably have the best. Oh, I'll um, read the chieftain. Articles and stuff on it. Yeah. I can't believe that. Sorry. This is sidebar. The chieftain has been around for ever it's like our gazette but our gazette i don't think is still around oh it's a newspaper yeah the G- the chieftain since yeah. our parents well, were kids really right yeah. oh yeah yeah because we have our grandfathers in that paper because oh, i have really? clippings yeah that's insane because he was also a police officer oh. so there's things in there about him i didn't know my dad just showed me some clippings he must have gotten from your mom's house after your oh, mom I'm died sure. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so go ahead. Next. We kind of jumped ahead, but finish I, the story. I just want to kind of like go over the facts for people that haven't heard the case. Yeah. Um, so on February 7th, uh, Pueblo police found Sh- Schelling's car, a black 2011 Chevy Cruze at St. Mary Corwin Medical Center in Southern Pueblo. On surveillance tape from the medical center, they found an unidentified black man had pulled up and parked it and walked away. So that was the last time it was... They moved it around. Yeah. Correct. And then police started looking over surveillance footage from other businesses and discovered that Lucas had parked the car at Walmart three times, three miles west of the hospital on February 5th, the day after, we already mentioned this, after Shelling was last seen. Um, And of course, she was nowhere to be found. And then I I watched footage, day and night footage of like the car just was there from morning Mm -hmm. to night. And his story was that he took her there to get snacks, but the car stays there. Right. And then he also took it through the ATM yeah. to make it look like she was, and they're like, where is she? You were alone. Yeah. Like, that's how stupid his thinking was, how naive he is. Well, and then it sounds like he sent her like these setup texts, like, because obviously he has both, fo- both, obvious now that he has both phones. So he's like, um, I'm sorry you went through that alone. Right. What? Like, that's what. You were supposed to be in the parking lot. Like- <laughs> that's why his family, her family is like. That's not how she talks. Like even messages. Didn't he send messages to like her friends or family or something? Or was it just between their two phones? Both. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. Wow. I purposely don't watch stuff on this because I want the the real stuff from her. But right before we did, did you know, we're going to do this. I watched a little bit so I can be, you know, know what I'm talking about. But I still don't want to taint what she tells me. Oh, I know. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about the bank, $400, where he takes uh, money oh, using sorry. her debit card. Mm-hmm. And then not long afterward, the Walmart surveillance video showed him dropping Shelling's car off and being picked up. So the mom on February 9th, she begins to panic about her daughter's whereabouts. She said she called Lucas to ask if he'd seen or heard from Shelling. And he told her he had seen her the prior Tuesday, but they'd gotten into an argument and Shelling had left. And then she says, at no point did Lucas inform her that he was in possession of her car, her phone, her bank card. And he also didn't inform her that he had driven Shelling's car to St. Mary Corwin. That mom was on top of it. Yeah, it sounds like it. She was. And unfortunately, I mean, I'm like best friends with the girl who took the original report. Uh And I'm telling you, there's a lot of times, I mean, 99% of the time, a parent will call on their adult child and say, well, I haven't heard from him. And so 
we definitely had a pre-Kelsey way of looking at things and a post-Kelsey way of looking at things. And I'm telling you pre-Kelsey, a lot of the times we tell the parents, like, I don't know, like, there's nothing we can do for you. Your child's an adult just because they didn't check in with you doesn't mean there's something wrong. And how often do you guys get calls like that? Oh, multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. However, post Kelsey, (laughs) we absolutely just write the report. And, you know, two days later, they'll call and be like, oh, they forgot to tell me they were going on a trip or you know what I mean? Right. Uh, 99% of the time it works out. But um, I mean, my friend remembers talking to Laura and she's just like, yeah, like she doesn't have to check in with you. You know what I mean? If she went to Denver or went to Pueblo to see her boyfriend, I don't know what to tell you. Right. But Laura is from Denver and unlike a lot of Pueblo moms who knew in her gut something was wrong and did not stop. Right. So it sounds like her being the squeaky wheel kind of just kept things it go- did. going in and her life. Unfortunately, there, I mean, there's a lot of ways that the police department's hands were tied and the detective who was assigned to this case originally is a great, great detective. He's a wonderful cop. Well, He's he has to be because he was able to get somebody convicted without... Well, it wasn't him, though. Oh. He ended up leaving. He was the first detective assigned that Laura did not like. Oh. And I know it's hard from her point of view because I'm a mother, too, so I can understand it. Oh. But there are things like there's a constitution. Like we just can't mm-hmm. go do the things that she wanted this detective to go and do. You need right. to have probable cause to apply for warrants. And they didn't have any of that. They just had a mother's gut feeling. and mm-hmm. that that just doesn't work. And so I'm sad that she, you know, thought so little of that detective because he really, he really did a lot of work, but there's only so much we can do. Mm, Right. It sounds like there was just a lot of circumstantial evidence that just there was. And unfortunately his own mouth and his own actions are what helped get him convicted. Thank God. And that's so rare. Like there's no body. So that's amazing. That's that's completely amazing. It sounds like there was kind of a little bit of a regime change, like when she did the there lawsuit was. and all that. Did that kind yeah, of... Yeah, there had been, I mean, there was... Can you hear us? Can you hear me? There... Yeah, I can see you. Know. It said like the internet connection was unstable. Oh, or something. okay. Go finish. Can you say what you were saying again? About the um, yeah, I was just saying that the detective that she thanked up one side and down the other Mm -hmm. at the press conference after from cbi he was at the police he was with the police department when kelsey first went missing she just doesn't remember that oh Um, okay okay yeah well i mean you can only do so much with red tape but when you're a mom you're grieving you're freaking out you know something's up you want justice you're not thinking about all that oh i know and I mean, as officers, we want to keep our job. So <laughs> there's a lot we have to do, yeah. you know, that comes into play that we have to think about and can't just act on the gut feeling. And it's too bad she doesn't know the truth about how passionate you guys truly were. Like you were, you guys were so invested to the point where my cousin's contacting me and I'm sure like there were people going if you told anybody that you contacted me, although I oh, think they contacted other no. people too. Yeah, I was reading that, that you guys brought in a few other psychics. Yeah. I don't even know, Carleen, if I ever told you this, but some lady called me from, oh, Indiana, I mm. think. Some 60 some, 70 some year old lady who said mm. that she had seen it on the news or whatever and started telling me about where she thought she was and all oh this my stuff. Gosh. Yeah. I saw the call on the screen. I wasn't even supposed to be at work that day. And I was like, I better take this or somebody's <laughs> just going to hurt this lady's feelings. Oh, um, interesting. Did any of it flesh out or like did any of no, it? No, okay. but it was, she was describing the dump. Um, oh, interesting. Was, I happened to be, I happened to be right there when she, I just called her as I was driving and she's like, and then these tan buildings and this fence. And I'm just looking at the dump. And, <laughs> That's 10 buildings and events. That's, well, sometimes when they are giving us breadcrumbs, because if you went to court and said, well, the medium told us, that's not going to, yeah. that usually isn't going to fly. So that's why I was trying to explain, like, we can only give breadcrumbs to lead you to because you have to collect the evidence 
in order right. to get to where you need to get. But right. sometimes it- when they're giving us that, it's a lot of times they're showing us things like you were right there looking at that. Well, Kelsey could have been telling that person information, like validating that you guys had looked at the dump right. and looked at that yeah. area and we're say, saying that was one of the first places she was taken because right. I truly think it was. Yeah. So she could have been giving information and like, and like me, she kept showing me an aerial view. She showed me the snow and that it was cold. That's why I was like, okay, was she killed in this month or was she, yeah. I got to know because it's cold. I feel the snow. I kept getting really cold, like chattering cold. And then um, seeing the trees that I don't recognize, I knew there's mountains involved. And so there were just like, she gave us breadcrumbs. And so they, they can't lead us directly a lot of times directly to the water. Like I had another person that was sending me, also sent me a picture and wanted me to solve a crime. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know any information, but people sometimes forget that I don't know that. And so I was like, I hear the person who did it has like an accent, like a drawl, like a Southern drawl. And she's like, well, yeah, of course he does. And I'm like, what do you mean? Of course he does. <laughs> she's like, it's in Texas. I'm like, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know anything except for this picture you sent me. So they just give us breadcrumbs. Right. But she, but she wanted a name. Right. Like she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, they're they're white, they're wearing a hat, they have a southern draw. You're describing every single Texas guy here. W- <laughs> tell me the name and I'm like, I don't I can't give you that. So it looks like he was finally arrested in 2017, like on other charges. Yeah, him and his mom had been a part of a robbery. Oh, I always wanted to know what they were arrested for cuz you never told me. Yeah, it was it was not a very good case, but it was hmm. just something to kind of get them in there for, get them talking and stuff like that. Okay. And then they had the warrant served while in there, yeah. right? Well, because remember there was the time where he was trying to go to Arizona. Oh yeah. Right. To Tucson. Arrested him at can the we, airport. Can we talk about that? <laughs> this girl, what's her name? Lauren, sir, that she inserted oh, yeah. herself into this. I like, even mm-hmm. contacted the mom and told her that, she wanted to get information and that she she went undercover. Oh, please. Are you kidding me? Getting in a relationship with this guy. Oh, my God. Like, she falls in love. Oh, dear So that's God. who he was going to see, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Oh, dear yeah. Lord. Yeah. And this is the guy who openly has prostitutes over yeah. at his house. And- so literally within, like, the same day, like, within days of her, him, like, this happening to her, him killing her, he's calling prostitutes. Oh. Ordering prostitutes. Wow. Yep. Nope. Mm-mm. Makes you wonder where that four hundred dollars went. Mm. Yeah. Pills and prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. He was a piece of work. Like first class piece of shit. Yeah. My has got a hot date. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to see my brother. Actually. What? To Marky? Yeah, I'm going to Chris. Chris. He's in yeah. town. No, I'm driving up to Castle Rock, mm. and he's going to come down from Denver. It was so nice to see him when he came yeah. out for Sandy. That yeah. was nice to see him. Yeah. Sorry. No. Family bonding. We'll do it later. <laughs> have, um, any breaking questions that I can answer for you before I go? Um, there was that girl that was supposed to testify. Um, I can't remember, but she was murdered literally before she was yeah. supposed to testify. I really don't think that had anything to do with it. It was just a domestic violence relationship oh. she was in. Okay. Um, I don't think they're that smart. That family is that smart nor that powerful. Right. I mean, I know that's kind of the news blew it up and wanted people to think that, but truly, Sarah's just a drunk with a bunch of dysfunctional kids. kids. Dysfunctional (laughs) kids who do not have the right to a fair childhood, that's for sure. Uh, All right. Well, we know you got somewhere to be. Um, we thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you uh, sure, taking if there's time. Ever any other time you want to talk about anything, I would be happy to. I think to. we should. Oh, we yeah. should. That would be fun. Yeah. You'll be our uh, our official expert. expert. Okay, I'll be your guest expert. Yeah. I like it. No, I totally think we should. Plus there's I think I well there are some co- more Colorado ones I think I want to do, but there is some ghost places that we need to we should research out there yeah some haunted places and we could bring you in on those because you live there because the girls your girls are the ones that have told me about it yeah 
So you know, because you, you were raised there, you've probably been in those places. I think yeah. one of them is the old fire station or police station. Oh, you're... there's there's both of them. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> the it's the restaurant now, Yeah, but there are areas of it that we could still get to. Oh, I think we, we need to take, okay. To Colorado. I know, Come we on. need to go through, go hit New Mexico, go to Colorado. Yeah. Do it. And have it was very nice to meet you, Alma. All right. Ghost Adventures. Thank you, Miana. Thanks Miana. for joining us. Bye. Look forward to meeting you again. All right. <laughs> Bye, Miana. Right. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. All right. Well, let's kind of just wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, finish going because we got her uh, professional insight. So that, and there was a time like when they did the backyard, her and I spoke because we wanted to see. I didn't feel like it was the right backyard like I kept saying I don't think this is it this isn't it right and then she's like well look here she sent me pictures and stuff and I'm like this doesn't look like it but the dog next door was freaking out and focused on one area of that backyard and Uh but I again sometimes is somebody's willing something so let's say Mayanna's focused on her idea of what she thinks happened if I'm reading through her or connected to the case through her, I will pick up on if what she's thinking is really strong, I'll pick up on what she's thinking. Right. And it'll influence what I'm hearing. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does make total sense. And so, and so sometimes it's just best like, that's why I like it when I, um, when I meet people for the first time that are coming to see me, don't call me, just text me. Right. So I don't connect with them. So I don't have any of that, of their what they think or their worries or whatever. Right. If that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. So like I said, he was found guilty of first degree murder. On Why her- are our mics jacking They're up? just popping and popping. So it's weird. driving me crazy. Me too. Nothing. The fan's not on. It's There's nothing coming through right there. No. It just keeps popping and popping. It's not that. Even hers was doing it. Yeah. The, the computer. I wonder if it's... Uh, if it's this, very weird. Or if it's just Kelsey's energy. It could be. All right. Uh, Sorry. So you were talking about he is now he's been convicted. Yep. Life in prison. No possibility of parole. So that's good. There's that. Yeah. So I did want to ask her about that. Uh, oh, God. Well, Why you should I write have. down her name. No, she she, oh, she okay. answered because I was wondering if that had the girl that was supposed to testify and then mm. she ends up being murdered, which. Oh, I didn't hear about. Th- See, like I said, I don't want to taint it even now. I still am in that mindset of not watching stuff because right. I don't want to taint what Kelsey says, even though I can watch it now because it's over. Yeah. It's just also crazy. So yeah, like I, said, I didn't a, know somebody. So who was the girl? Her name was Roxanne Martinez. Um, she was 31. And she basically her testimony was that he had admitted to her some key mm-hmm. testimony regarding the murder. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder why my why they think it's so far fetched that I mean I get they don't think they're that bright, but they are that ruthless. Well this guy was not definitely falls into like if he was a serial killer, he definitely <laughs> falls into disorganized Yeah. The disorganized Well that's killer. why I mean from the beginning I told Mayanna he's not the he's not the one doing all this. Right. His mom is. Right. She's the one that told him, you need to do this. Get it done. This is what you're going to do. Like, she's she's the puppet master. Right. He's the puppet. I believe it. Mm-hmm. And then there was also... That's um, why I wanted her to be convicted, too. So I'm kind of sad. Yeah. That she's getting away. I mean, based on the fact that everything was circumstantial with him, it probably would be more, more difficult for her mm-hmm. to get a conviction. Yeah. Too bad they can't get anything... F- for the crematory, I do believe that that could, that would totally make sense for why she, I see her in pieces. Yeah, there was, I don't know if it was a text, but there was another text out there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like the time frame, but I know it was within, I think it was that same day on the 5th, where they're texting each other. And he says, she's like, are you coming over? And he says, I need to get rid of her first. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. To that effect. Mm hmm. So, I mean, there was just, like, so much. There was uh, her car. And I didn't want to say, well, she's on, but, like, the public police department wasn't a darling in this whole case. Yeah. Like, and, and I understand, like, it's good to get her point of view. Right. As to, like, their caseload and, like, well, you know. 
It is true. Before red, Kelsey and after Kelsey, like the yeah. you know. and red tape does make it hard for officers to do their work, right? But also, yeah, I like that they have a pre and post way of handling things now. Right. Like they learn, they learn from it, right? And that's instead good. Instead of just thinking we did what we could and then keeping things the same, they learn from it. Exactly. I like that. I do appreciate that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I can't speak bad of Pueblo Police Department. No, you can't. You can't. Because we, my grandfather was a police officer in Pueblo. My cousins. I wouldn't speak bad about them anyway because we don't know the situation. Right. I do like that we have her input. Yeah. And she knows. She knows. She does know. She knows that there's things they could have done better. Yeah, exactly. But that's with everything. It wouldn't matter. Even if they did things differently, there still would be things that they could have done better. I do understand, like... If I was somebody taking the call and that whole adult child perspective, yeah. that would definitely have a bearing on how serious I took it. Right. But of course, she said pre Kelsey, post Kelsey, they take the report now. Yeah. At least take the report. Right. Instead of she's an adult, we have to wait. She hasn't become that long. A mom knows. Yeah. And like Mayanna said, she's a mom. She has she has a tribe of kids. <laughs> <laughs> So she can empathize with her, you know, and how she felt. But as long as they all learn something from it. Right. Yeah, definitely an interesting case. I did want to talk about our weekend and like how much I appreciate the fact that you like talked to my my uncle. Oh, that him. was so sweet. He's cute. I love him. He's he's with my aunts right now. But Did he, he get what getting... he needed? Yeah, I think he did. I, I think, think he did. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think he wanted more clarification on his friend. I think he did. And I think he mm. understood it was for him. Like when you were done, like mm. it's for him. It's mm-hmm. not because he, we were talking on the way over here and he's like, I understand. Mm. <laughs> he's so cute. Aw, I'm glad. Yeah. But I think he was really happy. He was really happy to hear from my dad too, which well, was I kind can... of fun for me to yeah. like see. I know that side of my dad. I didn't. I know that side. But he doesn't come through that way. And I always like, yeah, with his brother, he definitely that was so playful. And I it gave me a new perspective on your dad. Like, I've, I don't know your dad only from when he comes through for you. But he's never like that. Yeah, that was so much fun. He was they were goofy. It did. It did brighten your uncle up. Oh, it did. Yeah. That was sweet. Yeah. He talked about it all night. I love it. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I think we should probably, where are we right now? We're at 52 minutes. Oh, this will be good. People will be like, wow, no they did a short <laughs> Okay, these dogs. <laughs> Look. <laughs> they just pushed me. What are you doing? Right She's grooming him and he's enjoying it it's, to the point where like, he's everywhere. You're a magnet to these dogs. Yeah. Don't. It's okay. Don't good thing my legs aren't, it's more like my upper, upper body. Yeah. I wouldn't be wearing pants right now if my body, my whole body was, it's my upper. Yeah, you're definitely flushed. Yeah, it's not feel good. It's not feel good. It's not feel good. <laughs> yeah, this is a different kind of episode because we're, uh, we're not drinking. It's like the morning. Morning. T- <laughs> <laughs> hey, we could have had screwdrivers or something. Or right. The lemonade with vodka. But yeah. I didn't even have my coffee yet, so. I was thinking of doing that, like making coffee and having Kahlua. Mm. I should have yeah, did that. Could have done that. Hindsight. He is really gazing at me. He was doing this a minute ago, too. Hey, does that feel good? Oh, yeah. Hey, we've gotten through 52 minutes without him farting, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no farts? No farting? <laughs> He's like, stop making fun. Mama comes in. Stop making fun of my baby. All right, girl. Shall guys, we finish? Yeah, oh. we should finish up. Well, anyways, uh, if you guys want to visit us at our website at tipsy-tales.com, if you want to contact us, we do have an email, tipsytalespodcast at yahoo.com. We are on Facebook under Tipsy Tales Podcast, Instagram, Tipsy Tales Podcast. We're also on Twitter, Tipsy Tales Pod, and we do have a Patreon, and we are at patreon.com slash tipsy tales and if you want to contact carlene you can car- contact her at well facebook psychic medium carlene higgins or um well you threw me off <laughs> carlene dot spirit dot spirit at yahoo.com 
And if you uh, feel the need to support us in any way, you could tell your friends, follow us, like, support us in any way you would like. It doesn't cost anything to push a button. And we appreciate everybody that's given us feedback, everybody that's still listening. (laughs) Oh my gosh, Uh, I gave the shirt to Hannah and it's a big hit. Did she send a picture? Not yet. No. She's going to send a picture so everybody she loved can it. see. Yeah, she loves it. It oh. looks so cute. Does the it? Tank. I didn't even pull it out so look cute. at it. I started to and then I was like, oh, I'll just yeah. it. She put it on and was like, look, and she sent it to the art everybody. We need a picture so we could put it on our show everybody else. Right. All right, guys. Sorry for the audio. If there's any, if you hear all the static when this comes out, it sounds on like our we're end, on a it bumpy sounds road. pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, sounds like we're on a bumpy road. Okay. Hey, and so on the next episode, we're hoping to have Philip from My Celluloid Heart podcast, and Carlene's probably going to do a reading if he's open. He is. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it comes out. We'll see so if anything happens. stay tuned for that. Anyways, thanks you guys for listening in. This is Alma. This is Carlene. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.